So this was a big trip for us. Thailand's the furthest I've ever been from home, but we also had kind of lightweight weight restrictions. So I just want to walk you guys through what I packed in my camera bag because I wanted to bring absolutely everything and, and definitely couldn't. First of all, the bag I've got with me is the Peter McKinnon Nomadic bag. I've been using this most of the time, almost full time for quite a few months now. I feel like there was a long time where camera bags were all kind of mediocre and now a lot of problems have been solved. They did a really good job with this. I mean, it just feels super comfortable, rock solid. And an underrated feature that I love, most bags should do, is if you just put it down, but it stays standing up at an airport, this is crazy helpful. And absolutely essential to every backpack is the Peak Design Arca Swiss Quick Clip. I'm not sure the technical name for this thing, but I absolutely love, especially when you're doing anything active, if you're hiking, when we go skiing. Anything where you're doing something with your hands at the same time as you might need to shoot, it's way better than a camera strap because it's not dangling all over the place. I've also got this Peak Design wrist strap, which I do have a big complaint about this. It auto tightens, makes sense, right? Like it, it kind of is a little noose so that it gets tighter on your wrist, but often that becomes really hard to get off. Like I can't take it off with one hand. I'd like a lock on this so that it could just stay wide open. That's actually how I'd usually use it. But yeah, most of the time I don't have a strap because of this clip so that no matter what I'm doing, I can have quick instant access to it. You've seen these before. I mean, Peak Design has just been taking over in the accessories market and for good reason. All right, and we can go inside the bag. And I feel like most influencers like show the inside of their bag and it's perfectly organized. That's not me in the middle of a trip. It looks like a mess. So I'm not gonna give you that perfectly symmetrical top-down shot. Instead, I'm gonna show you what I'm actually using. So you saw it already. This is the Fuji X-T5. It just came out. This is a review unit. And I really like this camera. I was, I was looking forward to this specific release when they updated their sensors. The whole new line of Fujis are really fantastic. This has the same sensor in it as the X-H2, 40 megapixels. So same image quality, but a few less perks and a slower processor inside. If you saw my review of the X-H2S, that was like my favorite camera of the year, and I prefer that stacked sensor over the 40 megapixels. So I'd kind of rather have seen that in here, but the image quality is fantastic. And the best thing about it is the way they did their flip out screen here. It's really optimized for photography, so it doesn't flip out all the way around to do selfies, but it's both, or I guess all three of the main angles you'd use as a photographer. So if you're looking top down, kind of Hasselblad style, or if you'd need to like hold it above your head, it tilts down, and then it also tilts up for vertical images like this. So I use all of these all the time. I actually prefer this to a flip out screen, which I'm using a flip out screen right now to record myself. Sometimes you need it, um, but uh, more on that in a second, I guess. If I wasn't testing this camera on this trip, I would have packed something lighter like the X100 or put a smaller lens on here like the uh, 18 to 55 2.8 to uh, F4. It's way more compact than this 24 to 70 equivalent, but this one's sharper and kind of a better lens. It just takes more weight. AirPods Pro, this is the first gen I haven't upgraded because I kind of think they're gonna do USB-C soon and I'm just kind of holding off for that, but I've heard the new ones are even better. I've been using these SanDisk drives and I got three of them. These are all my like, video drives on the go and I have attached them with an AirPod, which I think was very clever. So not only do I have an AirPod at my drives at all times, but I also can keep them together. I think this just tells me I need to start buying bigger drives instead of using three of them. Actually, four of this, because this has our photos on it. And another AirTag. Tons of SD cards. I was tweeting the other day about how like 128 is my perfect size, so I think I gotta replace all these 64 gigabyte ones with more 128s. And then just a couple CF Express Type B cards. This is a Lexar with a Lexar card reader. I gotta start picking up more of these gradually, but I, I don't know, I like SD more because they're smaller and work in more of the cameras I use. Bigger, slower drive for actual backup and archiving. Oh yeah, and this was a big decision for me. I brought the MacBook Air instead of the MacBook Pro 16 inch that I always usually travel with. I just need to edit videos on the go. Like a lot of the year we are traveling, so I need to be able to keep working and it seems like too much of a compromise to go to such a small machine. After this trip, I am kind of addicted. I haven't really had any situations that I couldn't handle on this smaller machine. The only significant downside is the screen real estate. Like when you're editing videos, the video becomes pretty small once you've got the whole interface and the timeline visible. There's less real estate to see what you're working on. So 
I would love to see a 15 inch MacBook Air and then I think maybe I could start using like a desktop for my full time at home work and then actually use an Air when we're on the road. When I posted this one on my stories, I think it got more responses than like anything else I've posted. And I'll tell you what it is in a second, but first, huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Invato Elements. They are an amazing resource for freelancers and content creators. If you're not familiar with Invato Elements, it's a subscription-based service that gives you access to millions of stock photos, video templates, graphic templates, music, and more. So let's try this out. I'm working on a travel video right now. I'm gonna search for Drone Thailand and instantly I get some epic, beautiful shots that I certainly didn't have time to shoot myself, but now I have establishing shots for different locations. They're in 4K and already included in my subscription. And when your creative project is done, you can use their website templates to show it off to the world. They've got you covered every step of the way. And even when your subscription ends, you're cleared for anything you created while it was active. So if you're a freelancer or a content creator looking to up your game, I highly recommend checking out Invato Elements. Their affordable subscription is a no-brainer for anybody that wants to up their production value with professional assets that you don't need to create on your own. So you can be efficient and focus on what you do best, creating amazing projects. So hit the link in the description and thanks again to Invato Elements. So when I shared this in Instagram stories, I was kind of surprised how many people hadn't heard about it because it's made by 12 South. They sell these, I think in Apple stores, they're really kind of easy to come by. And I've had it for more than a year now and it's called an AirFly and all it does is it plugs into any headphone jack, doesn't matter what it is, and sends the signal out to Bluetooth. And this one's the Duo model, so you can connect up to two different AirPods. And it's really simple, you just like press and hold the button, open up your AirPods, and connect as if it's a phone and the connection is really reliable on the flight here which was over 15 hours it didn't drop out and the batteries didn't die in this thing so i was able to listen to the movies from the airplane entertainment system so good to travel with the next one you're listening to right now this is the rode video micro 2. so rode introduced this microphone quite a few years ago as like the cheaper vlogging alternative and I think it's been really popular. I've seen a lot of them around and they've made some pretty significant updates to them. This one, the thing that I like the most is that it just has a louder output. So it's depending on the preamps inside of your camera less than the previous Rode Video Micro. Right now I'm recording into the Canon R5 and Canon mirrorless cameras are a little notorious for having mediocre preamps that are a little bit noisy. So now you don't have to turn up the volume as much to hear good audio. Anyway, I haven't heard it yet because I haven't edited this video, so you guys are gonna have to tell me what it sounds like in the comments. Like, is this acceptable for a vlogging microphone? It sure is easy to carry around. Pretty big fan of it so far. Now, speaking of the R5, let me show you what I'm shooting this on. All right, so this is the Canon R5. This is kind of my go-to. I, I, I kind of love it, but I kind of, um, drives me crazy sometimes, especially on this trip I've been using for video a lot. But I don't really like that it only has C-Log3. So right now you're seeing video from the uh, Fuji X-T5 and it's shooting in F-Log2. That is a flatter, more cinema, properly cinema log curve. Whereas C-Log3 is just not flat enough and not flexible enough when I grade it. So I actually don't love the footage that comes out of here even though it's super sharp doesn't have all the dynamic range I'd like. But on it, I've got the 15 to 35 RF 2.8, which this is a new upgrade for me. I hadn't been using any RF glass, but it's so much sharper than the 16 to 35 I usually have with me and it's stabilized and it's wider. On the front of it, I've got the Peter McKinnon variable and D filter from Polar Pro. For my money, this is the best screw on variable ND out there, but I actually don't really like using variable NDs unless I have to. Um, that's another thing about the R5, no built-in NDs, but we didn't have enough space in the suitcase for the C70 on this trip. And then I've also always got the 24 to 70 in the bag as well. This is kind of the standard lens that we're using for most photos. If you look at Anya's blog or her Instagram, almost everything is shot on this. Until this trip, I think we've been using the 15 to 35 more on it, but these two lenses come with us everywhere and are just incredibly versatile. Every time we travel, even though usually I don't end up needing it that much, I do bring a flash. And on this trip, I just switched to a much smaller and more affordable one too. So usually I've got the official Canon speed lights, which work great, they have tons of output, but I usually don't actually need that much power. It's often just a little bit of fill in the eyes or you know, shooting at night, indoors, something like that. This is the Godox Lux Junior. It's super small, doesn't have as much output, 
but it's just really easy to use. It doesn't have all the TTL features as well, so I'm just setting it manually on the dial here. Uh, it's kind of got a traditional retro design. It does have basic automatic mode, which actually usually does work, but I don't know, I've just kind of been using it in the simplest way as that small fill, and it works. I think the only complaint here is it does take AAA batteries, so I don't know, that can be a positive because you can buy them anywhere, so some people might like that. I preferred like rechargeable lithiums. I mean, if I could just plug this in at the end of the day, that might be a little bit easier to use. No one will be surprised that I brought my iPhone 14, which obviously is like the camera I might be using the most often, um, taking a lot of photos on this. But I think more interesting for the context is this Plug Bug Slim. So this is also from 12 South and it's just a little USB-C charger. Uh, I've got an iPhone cable going into it, but you can plug in whatever you want. And it is, it's got up to a 20 watt output. So this can fast charge an iPhone, even can charge iPads. I really like just having this with me wherever it is. It's not even that this is the smallest charger I've ever seen, but it is the shape that it fits super easily into other places that some of those like small square chargers don't fit. I, I really like it. If you don't already have one, these small rig multi-tools are super helpful on any set. I have one with me at all times. It's just got all of the most common, um, well, first of all, Allen keys, this size, this is what's on most cameras, but then also, you know, a few of the other basics. I almost forgot to mention, this is the battery bank I was using while we traveled, which, okay, it's a V-Lock battery mount, right? 50 watt hour, made by small rig. So usually you'd slap this onto the back of a camera, but these ones are just so well designed. I was using it to charge everything. They sent me both their 50 watt hour and 99 watt hour, and it charges over USB-C, which is kind of a game changer in my books when it comes to V-Lock, because that means I don't need to carry around a special charger. It'll send power both in and out of USB-C, USB-A. It's got all the outputs, including, of course, D-Tap for your standard accessories, and a big bright screen that shows you the percentage, and then while it's charging, it shows you how much wattage is going out to your accessories. Absolutely love these. I actually was surprised to see small rig do so well with an electronics accessory because I usually just think of them for rigging, but well done small rig. These are my new favorite V-Lock batteries. And that's my travel kit on this trip. Kind of minimal actually. My bag's lighter than it usually would be. And I also sort of wish I could have carried more. But if you want more, I've got a playlist reviewing all this gear that I use. So I'll see you over there.